Hi everyone, this is the Trig2 review and this is question number 1a. We're supposed to solve the following equations here. Now, notice first of all that the domain that we're solving this under is from negative 180 to 180. So, uh, what, what I want you to know by that is when we take a look at this, at this interval here, this includes a negative half rotation and then a positive half rotation. So I'm looking for answers in the in all four quadrants here, but but two of them are coming from the negative rotation, two of them are coming from the positive rotation. Now, when we take a look at this first equation here, notice that there's a fairly significant problem here. I've got a cosine and a sine function together in the same the same equation. Now, unless I can factor those apart, I, I can't work with that. So something's got to give here. Something's got to go. So I'm looking for identities. Now. You might notice right off the bat that 1 and negative 2 sine squared of theta, that's going to equal cosine squared of theta. Or sorry, not cos cosine squared, cosine of 2 theta is what I mean. And we might say, ah, well, there we go. Cosine of theta plus the cosine of 2 theta equals 0. But this, this puts us in another problem because the arguments of these two functions here, these two trick functions are different. And because they're different, I'm stuck again. There's there's really very little I can do here. So I need a different identity to approach that. And it probably wouldn't take you a whole lot of time here to realize, well, I got that sine squared there. So maybe what I'll do is I'll rewrite this as the cosine of theta minus 2 times, okay, well, sine squared of theta will be 1 minus the cosine squared of theta. Okay, plus 1 equals 0. Notice I put those in parentheses here, okay, because it's negative 2. Okay, that 2 times the sine squared, and if I'm replacing sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared theta, that negative 2 has to be multiplied by both. So I multiply that out, and I will get the cosine of theta minus 2 plus 2 times the cosine squared of theta plus 1 is equal to 0. Now, the benefit here is that everything is in terms of cosine. So now I'm going to reorganize this, make this 2 cosine squared of theta plus the cosine of theta, and then I got a negative 2 and a positive 1, so minus 1 equals 0. Now, there are two levels to this problem. Okay, there's the algebra, and then there's the trig. Right now, I am faced with an algebra problem. Okay, I've got a cosine squared, I've got a cosine here, and I've got some coefficients here. Really, the issue with, with this is factoring. I need to factor this. So, let's just think about this a little bit. Okay. 2 cosine squared, okay, well that's got to be 2 cosine theta, and this has got to be cosine theta. There's, there's no other way that I'm going to be able to multiply those two fa uh, factors together and get 2 cosine squared theta, because that 2 is a prime number. Now additionally, the bonus to this is this is a 1 over here, so this has to be 1, this has to be 1. Okay, no, no uh, decisions to be made there. Except now it's negative 1, so one of these is negative, one of them is positive, that's what's going to give me a negative 1 there but the sum has to be positive 1. So I'm going to get that as long as when I multiply these two out here, I'm going to get positive 2 cos and then a minus cos there, minus 1 cos in the middle here. And so that is that is now that uh, quadratic trigonometric, trigonometric function factored. If this is true, then cosine of theta must equal a half. If this is true, then the cosine of theta must equal negative 1. Okay, now let's think about this. Cosine of theta is equal to positive 1 half. Well, what two quadrants is cosine positive in? Well, let's just draw it over here. Okay, so we'll draw this out here. Now, bear in mind, we are talking about a negative half rotation and a positive half rotation. Cosine is positive in quadrants 1 and 4. Okay, and when I think about that a little bit more, I remember, ah, well, the reference angle. Cosine becomes a half at 60 degrees. Okay, so I'm talking about a reference angle of 60 degrees in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4, but again, I'm in quadrant 4 because of a negative rotation. So what I'm going to get here for my theta, oops, sorry, you can't see that. What I'm going to get here for my theta is negative 60 degrees when I, when I go down that negative into the, uh, along the negative rotation towards my terminal arm, negative 60, and then I'm going to get positive 60 up here. So these are the two solutions I'm getting, I'm getting from this factor. Over here, 
cosine of theta is equal to negative one. Now, negative one is an interesting result, okay? Because if you think, think about it, think, go back in your memory here, cosine fluctuates between one and negative one. So negative one is at the bottom extreme of the values that cosine can get. So the easiest way to think about where that occurs, okay, is to think about that unit circle, okay? When we go around the full circle here, well, where does cosine go to zero? Well, cosine is associated with the x-coordinate. That Sorry, where does cosine go to negative one? And that's, that's over here where the x-coordinate along the unit circle goes to negative one. So that's right here, that's at 180 degrees. Now, let's go back to our original domain here. This is taking me from negative 180 degrees, uh, and theta is gonna be greater than or equal to, ah, there it is. I'm including negative 180, okay. So there's one of my solutions right there. One of these answers has to be negative 180 degrees. But it also includes the positive 180. So this is actually wrapping all the way around, and I'm gonna catch both extreme ends of this domain. So not only do I have negative 180, I've also got positive 180 as the possible solutions to this. And so right there, those are the four answers to this equation.